morning. Joining me now is Jasmine Crockett. She's one of the Texas Democratic representatives who left the state to try to prevent the passage of the voting law. Uh, Representative Crockett, uh, Crockett, good to see you again. Thank you for being with us this morning. It is a rough week uh, to be in Texas right now, to be, uh, to be anybody in Texas, but to be a woman, to be a person of color, to be a person of, of, uh, of modest economic means. Uh, what is going on in your state? Um, my state has lost their minds, honestly. Um, but good morning, and it's great to see you. You know, when I was in D.C., uh, there was a rally that we did with Dr. Barber. And one of the things that I told uh, the persons that were at this rally was that, honestly, we just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, people didn't realize how terrible our regular session was. People are just now starting to understand why we walked out that very first time and understanding the level of frustration and how much we had truly been abused the entire session and how inflexible our colleagues have been the entire session on all these bills, from saying that white supremacists could go ahead and carry with permitless carry, from saying that even if a child, even at the tender age of 10 years old is raped and impregnated, that she would still have to carry this child, we could not get any decent amendments on any of these bills when it came to voting, when it came to uh, permitless carry, and also obviously when it came to CRT and so many other things. Uh, so ultimately, when it came down to our democracy, they gave us no choice because they were inflexible with that, and that is the foundation of everything that we do in this country. So elections have consequences, and one of the things that's been happening in the state of Texas is that it has been uh, evolving in terms of its population, a population that is becoming more democratically diverse um, and that would actually favor Democrats over time, except what, what Republicans have done in this legislative session is they have done things to reverse that trend. So the idea that eventually Republicans, unless they became more mainstream and did things that were uh, sort of that appealed to a broader group of people in Texas would be voted out of power, they've actually undone with these voter restrictions. In other words, they've extended their time in power. Absolutely. Um, that was one of the things that we kept saying is that this was a power grab. It wasn't about democracy. They were afraid of the number of people of color. You brought that up. When we look at the census, we know that 95 percent of the growth was due to people of color in the state of Texas. But honestly, I would say it's even higher than that. We know that historically there's always an undercount when it comes to specifically black and brown people. And guess what? Those were the two or two of the largest categories of growth that we had in the state of Texas. And so now we're heading into yet another depressing uh, portion of Texas history. Uh, and that's going to be redistricting because they know yep. that they can't win on the substance. They know that they lose because they don't have any good substance. They don't appeal to a broad cross-section of people. And so now we're heading into redistricting probably in the next couple of weeks in the state of Texas. And let me be clear. They, in fact, the Republicans have said, well, well uh, elections have consequences and the people elected us to be in control. Mm -hmm. But honestly, when you look at the numbers, there's 83 Republicans, 67 Democrats, but it was only eight to maybe 10,000 votes that kept us from flipping the House. They are dead set on changing those lines because they know some of them won by a razor thin, razor thin margin. Which means they can win with thinner margins under this new, this new way of doing things. There's a world in which conservatives in Texas and around this country could appeal to black and brown people. There are conservative streaks amongst black people and Hispanic people. It could, it could be one on the basis of good policy, but they have abandoned that decision. They have decided black and brown people are not likely to vote for us for decades to come, so we are just going to try and not have them vote. No, that's absolutely right. I mean, you heard from our lieutenant governor not too long ago where he said, well, the reason that we're having a problem with COVID is because of black people. And then he said, and we know that black people, well, they're Democrats. So this is a democratic issue. That's why we have terrible spread in the state of Texas. They continue to basically just evidence their racism. Um, instead of appealing, the reality is that I am the child of a preacher. So many black folk are really rooted in a very, um, a level of conservatism. And so there is a way to appeal to black people. There is a way to appeal to my brown brothers and sisters, which very many of them are actually Catholic. So they really do have the ability to appeal on very conservative issues. They choose not to. They choose to support white supremacy. They choose to go to the far right. 
they choose to do those things that actually isolate the majority of what Texas looks like. Just to be clear, GOP, I know you know this, but maybe the rest of the country doesn't know this, that Texas is a majority minority state. It's time to start to pass policies that will respect each and every Texan instead of a select few. Representative Jasmine Crockett, good to see you this morning. Thank you for being with us. Jasmine Crockett is a state representative representing the Dallas area in Texas.